Hello and welcome to the 15th annual LZ Micro main event. We are here at the Lux in Los Angeles. I'm joined by Frank Ingrizelli, CEO of Indonesia Energy Corp and president of Indonesia yes. Energy Corp. Uh, ticker symbol INDO on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Frank, thank you so much for joining us here today. Great, thank you. We're really excited to hear the progression of the story of the company. So Absolutely, please go yeah. ahead and share with the audience uh, everything that's been going on. Sure, yeah. Well, it's wonderful to be here. And again, now two conferences in a row that's been not virtual, but face-to-face -face with everybody. So it's wonderful to be back here and, and my favorite conference, especially being a micro-cap company. So... Uh, Six months ago, we gave an update, but uh, you know, just a week ago, Indonesia Energy. I'll give a little background on it. It's uh, you know, obviously from the name, we're located and our assets are located in Indonesia. But a lot of people don't know about Indonesia. So, Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world, after China, India, United States, and then Indonesia. It's got the largest economy in Southeast Asia and the 14th largest economy in the world. Wow. And it's been operating in the oil and gas sector for 50 years and more with every major company in the world operating there. So when I joined the company a little over three years ago, I was ready to hit the ground running and we did our IPO in December of 19 on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, as you mentioned, symbol INDO, very convenient for Indonesia Energy. And We've done great. So I know there's a lot of companies here. It's been a difficult year for many companies uh, with you know the market forces taking place. But Indonesia Energy, the year to date, is still up 150% wow. for the year. And our average volume, in the beginning of this year, we averaged volume of only 10,000 shares a day. Now we're averaging volume still at over 1 million shares a day. So wow. incredible liquidity. Uh, great assets. It's just, it's wonderful to be here and to tell the story of the company. Absolutely. Just in the short time between conferences, we've seen such growth from the company. Yeah, yeah. You have quite an impressive background yourself. Well, thank you. Will you tell <laughs> us a little yes. bit about your background and sure. how you got into the position? Great, here? sure. Yeah. I mean, I've been in the oil and gas sector industry for 42 years. Started my career at Texaco Inc. And I always tell the story that when I joined Texaco, like two weeks into the company, they sent me to China. And I basically parked myself there, including living there in 1983, but negotiated what turned out to be the first successful oil and gas project in China for Texaco Inc. Wow. And our partners at that time was uh, Chevron. But the board of Texaco and the management of Texaco said, hey, Frank, you're really good in communist countries, so we're going to now send you to the Soviet Union. Oh boy! So then I went to the Soviet Union and ultimately negotiated and, and was running for Texaco, Exxon, Amoco, Norse Kidro, and Luke Oil, what was at that time the largest private public company investment in Russia at that point in time. Multi-billion dollar company trying to develop oil fields in the Arctic of Russia. So it was a great experience, but then I went back to Texaco and moved up the ladder there and eventually at 45 years old became the president of Texaco International Operations. Wow. So it was a great, it was wonderful to do that, uh, traveling around the world, developing which was 60% of the revenues of Texaco Inc. was coming from the international sector. Wow. And so it was a wonderful experience at Texaco. But then what happened? 2001, Chevron took over Texaco and I had to re- invent myself and do all the things. So I consulted, but then I went out and I started three oil and gas companies all onto the New York Stock Exchange. And Indonesia Energy was the third company that uh, did that. So uh, we delivered value on all those other companies. Some of them are, you know, a, three years ago, I was presenting for Pacific Energy Development, PEDEVCO, P-E-D symbol. And then they went up, I think right after the conference, like the next week, they went up a thousand percent. I'm not going to say it was because of the conference or my speech, but we did a very important transaction. But, you know, now with Indonesia Energy and, and you know, sure enough, we're doing very really well there. So it's been a great career. I sometimes say I'm in the sunset of my career, but, you know, it's a long sunset. So I'm going to stick around for a long period of time and deliver value and shareholder value, which is most important for Indonesia Energy. So it's great to be part of the team.
That's, I mean, you worked with some of the biggest names in the game. I mean, I can't understand a more qualified leader at the oh, helm. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you so much. Um, yeah, thank now you. Now to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Would you like to tell, t tell us about some of the financial fundamentals? Sure. So, you know, I mean, being in the oil sector, of course, you know, what really drives the company is the price of oil. So when I was at the last conference, we were at uh, six months ago, oil was at like $120 a barrel. It came back down to about 70 but now we're back up to about 95. What I always say is that, you know, 42 years in this industry, I've never seen oil prices go down, but not go back up. And I've never seen them up and not go back down. So we're always gonna fluctuate like that. Certainly the war in Ukraine is going to, you know, affected oil prices and has kept them quite high. Mm -hmm. But we got a plan for the low points of oil, just as we plan for the high points. So what's very important in our financials is to be economically efficient. So, for example, we just announced last week we had our fourth discovery in a row of oil that we've had. And when you go to our website, indoenergy.com, indo-energy.com, you can see that the economics of each well we drill shows you that at $90 a barrel, which is where we are, we produce 1.5 million in net cash flow, which is exactly equal to the cost of drilling a well. So what's that saying is, we are delivering a 100% rate of return value on every well we drill. Wow. And so, and that's just gonna continue and we're gonna continue drilling like crazy on that asset in Indonesia. So the, uh, you know, the financial fundamentals are great for the company and uh, you know, we're gonna take advantage of, of you know, the current price of oil, but, but plan smartly and have a development plan that will prepare us for when oil does go down, which it will. And so that we have good economic efficiency on how we drill these wells and lower the cost that it costs to produce oil. Right now we're at $27 a barrel, oil at 90, so the margin is tremendous. But we wanna bring that, num that number down to about $20 a barrel. So financial fundamentals have been great for the company, but. We're always planning ahead to be careful and to have a good business plan and to uh, be ready for when oil prices do dip. And I think the consumers at the pump can appreciate that yeah, also. That's for sure. Yeah. And what are some of the core values that have guided you through the success? Yeah. So, you know, what's always very important is, you know, it's, it's fine. I just gave the presentation here just uh, an hour and a half ago. And somebody asked a question, well, what about what's happening with new energy and energy technology and, 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 clean energy in that. Well, it's very important. What we want to focus on is we want to make sure we're an environmentally safe company, that we take care, you know, we were very careful on safety of our employees and safety of the environment. And we want to do all of our operations ethically. And, you know, I'm not going to, being 42 years in this industry, I'm not going to go and work for a company that, you know, takes unnecessary risks that could harm the environment. We're doing everything we can to make sure we're one of the leaders. In fact, we were just recognized by the government of Indonesia as being one of the cleanest environmentally and safe companies and highest ethics in uh, the country of Indonesia. As small of a country uh, as we are. So it was that's a great fantastic. recognition. So that's very important to me, those fundamental values. Absolutely. And how are you dealing with the current environment uh, with the high inflation and uh, everything, the conflict that's going on in Ukraine. I know it's not as yeah. black and white as Biden may, no. President Biden may make it that's seem right. where yeah. you're hoarding oil and inflating no. prices. So yeah. tell yeah. us a little bit so, about that. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, sure, inflation is going to cost, you know, our, our cost to get drilling rigs and the equipment and the supplies that we need, whether it be chemicals or sand or pipe or whatever we might need, those costs are going up, they're going up globally, whether it's here in the United States or in Indonesia or wherever else you might be operating. So, you know, that makes it even more important that we gotta, given the inflation factor, that we got to look at how we can lower the costs of producing that oil. So we're gonna try to go from that $27 down to $20. And as I mentioned before, you know, we, we can't always plan that oil prices because of this Ukraine war, because of inflation are high. That's why we got to worry about costs and, and tackle the cost of doing business and drilling wells so that as we do get dips in the price of oil and, and the Ukraine war is gone and, and inflation is receding, that 
uh, or it goes higher, that we plan for that and we deliver value because number one is shareholder value for our company and doing it, as I said, in an ethical, safe, and environmentally friendly way. It's obviously a very uh, prominent point right now, ESG, it's very important. Absolutely, um, yeah. How do you so. monitor how your company is doing? Yeah, so you know we are, and, and it's very interesting because we've got approached by several organizations that want to help us monitor it. So they actually brought us metrics that we can use to see how we're doing, and uh, you know, and, and compare ourselves to other comparable companies that we can compare ourselves to to see how we are doing in ESG and on those metrics. So we do have a series of metrics that we look at, we evaluate, and we want to make sure that we hit those targets as a company and doing, again, things in the right way. Excellent. Is there any specific platform that you use? Well, of course, <laughs> when I mentioned on the last one, we had just signed up with Sequire, and uh, it's just amazing. I mean, I must say, it's, it's uh, just an amazing product that I can go there real time. I could see who's buying our stock, who's owning our stock, who's selling our stock, who those stockholders are. And, uh, uh, you know, it helps us plan for the company, see who those shareholders are, see why they're selling, contact them. We have ways to contact them because of the platform that you develop. So it's a wonderful product. It's the only product that we use. So we're doing our own self IR and PR in the company. And this complements that. So we know our shareholder, we know how to contact them. And uh, it's been a great, it's been a great experience. So I'm a big fan of of Sequire and uh, the LD microconference and everything you guys are doing. So thank you so shout much. Shout out to you guys. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah. And what in summarization, what are three key takeaways that you would want to tell investors? Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the, some of the key takeaways are, you know, we're, you know, again, you can't plan that oil prices are going to stay where they are. So it's important to be economically efficient, look at ways to reduce costs so that when we do have those dips in oil prices, or increases because of inflation and the cost of doing business, that we know how to operate efficiently. Uh, again, doing it in an ethically safe and environmentally friendly way, so we focus on that. And most important, that if you do those things, you're going to deliver shareholder value, just as we've done. And the proof is in the pudding. Stock's still up even with a very difficult year, 150% since January 1st. So we're going to continue to do those things. And that's the takeaway. That's, that's what we're doing at Indonesia Energy. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Well, we look forward to continuing to follow the story. What keeps Frank going every day? Oh, man, just uh, getting up. I, I, I love to start the day. You know, it's just this time of a company is my favorite time. When a company is, you know, I still find ourselves in the infancy of a company going public and all the challenges, but all the rewards it gives. So I just, I just love waking up every day and tackling any challenges that we have. But again, delivering on what 43 years has taught me to deliver on a, a valuable company and to deliver that shareholder value. So that's, that's what keeps fantastic. me going. That's great. And conferences and everybody out here that I meet. So it's, it's wonderful. The camaraderie is brilliant. It's great. It's, it's just great. great. Yeah. yeah and in this needed. environment, it's so, you know, we're, we're like on top of each other and, and talking to each other. It's just a great environment. So it's wonderful agree. to be here. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you here. Well, thank you so and much. Honor Jonathan. sitting yeah. down with you and hearing you. about yeah. Indonesian energy. Again, ticker symbol INDO. Yeah. Please go check them out. Frank, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you. Appreciate okay. you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.